Hello, my name is Eric Soberger, head of violin at Tone Bass. I'm a concert violinist and prize winner of international competitions such as the Tchaikovsky International Competition. Concert violinists play on some of the most rare and valuable instruments, sometimes worth 15, 20 million dollars. Well, today we're going to try a very different experiment. We're going to be comparing an Amazon Basics violin, valued at about half the price of a Belgian waffle maker, at about $100, and a JB Guadagnini on loan to me that was on exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Joining me will be Glenn Dictoreau, the legendary former concertmaster of the New York Philharmonic and currently on faculty at USC, the Yasha Heifetz Chair, and Daniel Kurganoff, concert violinist and also on our team at Tone Base. They'll be listening along as I switch between the two instruments. For the purposes of this experiment, I won't be revealing which violin is which until after the initial playthrough. So please feel free to drop a line in the comments about which violin you think is which. Okay, I have the feeling you're trying to trick me. Following that, we'll be hearing from our experts and I'll be sharing some of my own perspectives having played both instruments. I'm hoping and preparing for a miracle Well, number one is obviously world-class fiddle. Number two is, to me, there's no comparison, but you know, I have a trained ear. Uh, to the untrained ear, it just sounds darker and not as resilient, but it's not bad. For an Amazon violin, it's, it's astonishing that it can even sound that good. Yeah, of course, it's um, the richness of the Guaranini is, is undeniable, but I actually like the, uh, the the darkness of the Amazon violin, like the the very just just the open G, <laughs> actually, <laughs> things got a little shaky after that. But it was interesting. Like it wasn't it wasn't terrible. And I and I was left thinking, you know, if the taste wasn't trained, would it be like night and day? I'm really I'm pretty flabbergasted. But this goes to sh show you and to prove my theories that. It's not the pen, it's the penmanship. It's the player. You can make anything sound, Eric. After you strike the note and your basic sound comes out, then, of course, it's the overtone series that, that, that kicks into, into play here. And uh, the depth of the sound that you, you're producing. Obviously, if you're playing open strings and in first position, is it necessary for, I mean, $100 can get you at least going for a year. Playing on the JB Guadagnini is a very different experience than playing on the Amazon Basics violin. That being said, the things that really separate them for me are how easy you can create certain kinds of sounds on the JB Guadagnini in comparison to the Amazon Basics violin. Both have a very quick response. The issue is there's a certain degree of variety in colors and sounds that you can't really create in the same way on the Amazon Basics. While it's not fair to compare it directly with the JB Guadagnini, it's a great starting violin, and it's a violin that somebody could start with and then, in a year or two, upgrade from there. The most important thing is to get started. 
With the Amazon Basics violin, we have a very affordable price point compared to many other options. If you're just testing the waters and wanting to see if pursuing violin is something you want to do seriously. There's just one thing I want to mention, which is that when I first got the violin and had to tune up the strings, the bridge really moved a little bit too far forward. Now, this is something you want to be very careful of because it can fall down, first of all, but also because if it's more straight, even leaning back a little bit, it really creates a better sound. So the setup is super important. And if you get a violin like the Amazon Basics violin, go to a luthier and see how the setup looks on the instrument. It really makes a huge difference.